Hello friends. Today we're going to take apart this uh, fluorescent lamp ballast. This is kind of the standard ballast. Oh, here comes Polly. Right in the introduction. Excuse me, Polly. Here, you can sit over here for now. We're going to take apart this uh, fluorescent lamp ballast. This is one is approximately 25 years old or more. Uh, this is called a class P. These come in different classes that, that do the same thing in different ways. This one says no PCBs. That's very important. Older ones included PCBs, which are a uh, toxic material. So from like the early 70s and earlier, you do not want to take apart one of these that does not say no PCBs. That's very important. So this one is class P, which I know includes a very large inductor inside. We'll zoom out a little bit and see what we've got as the whole system before I take it apart. So basically this is the whole electrical guts of, an, of a two tube fluorescent shop light. Um, you've got input power on this end. You've got a pair of tube sockets or connectors. One for each end if you can imagine that. And this ballast, here comes Polly again, really the rest of a uh, Fluorescent light is either bulbs or else mechanical components like the uh, case and reflector and that sort of thing. So this is really the essence of a fluorescent lamp. The first thing I'm going to do before taking this apart is clip off our end wires. We know that this will never be used again. I'm decommissioning all of the fluorescent lights that I have in my house because it's been hard to find a way to dispose of the fluorescent tubes and you can they're environmentally uh, hazardous waste now because they contain small amounts of mercury uh, it's the kind of thing we didn't used to worry about 40 years ago, but we do now. So I've seen some of these torn down on the internet. There's two videos I've seen. Uh, one, the fellow basically abuses this to the point where it catches on fire. And then another one, the guy takes a hammer to it to get out the internal parts of scrap. But the pic the uh, question I've had is what is the actual circuit schematic that's inside this and I looked at that on the internet and uh, just have not been able to find anything that's a schematic so I know that this has a big inductor inside it it's quite heavy um, so we can expect some sort of uh, iron core with a lot of copper wound around it but my question is what other components are there and if any, and also is the iron core that's in here and or the copper of any reuse, say, to create a, a, a different type of transformer or inductor, or you may even be able to find some sort of hobby use for that in itself. Now, one thing I have seen on these is that they, in the other videos, they include a lot of black gunk of some kind, which I don't believe is hazardous, but at least it's uh, uh, messy so I put it on this piece of brown paper to kind of take up the mess and now I'm going to uh, start tearing this apart and uh, getting my hands dirty so we'll do that next okay I've set out some tools of persuasion as you might call them this isn't really the greatest thing it's a wood chisel but it looks like this can be used to Pry down this lip. The 
got the bottom cover that I'm trying to get off now. I've already had a chance to use multiple tools of persuasion. We're making this up as we go along, of course. Okay. And the winner is this black plastic gunk that I've seen in other videos. So we'll dig that out next and see what's underneath. So this is about the texture of a, it's kind of hard to describe. It's a tar-like substance, but a very hardened tar. And it's probably going to take a while to separate the tar from whatever is inside. Now we're getting somewhere. Luckily the cat is settling down so she won't be getting involved in any of the tar here. Looks like this is going to be quite a project so we'll stop again and I'll show you uh, when I get pretty close to done. Well, here it is in an intermediate state. Done a fair amount of digging. I think this is like gold mining where you dig until you see something shiny. I've got a little something shiny right here. We seem to be kind of towards the ends of where the wires go. Uh, I kind of suspect the elements in this are smaller than the tar brick, but maybe they got smaller over the years or something and they kind of kept the same form factor and just used more tar. So at this point, I've struck iron. I've struck copper. I still haven't struck gold. Here's a little bit of... See if we can get a better light on that. Here's a little bit of something that looks like part of a transformer. I don't think there's anything beyond these ends. That's just all filler, most likely, unless there's a capacitor or something in there. But, having gone to a lot of effort and only gotten this far, I'm beginning to understand why people set these things on fire or hit them with sledgehammers. So I just stuck this thing in a vise and broke off the ends of tar here that you see, which brought along most of this paper. We're getting down to whatever the unit is here. Here you can see a little bit of terminals exposed and wires coming out. So I kind of think this is basically the, the unit before it went into the tar, after I cleaned some more tar off, of course. So having dug a little deeper, let's stop and think about what we've got here. The outputs to this were all uh, yellow, blue, and red. So here's two reds, two blues, two yellows. The inputs were black and white, which are these two. And this is set up like a transformer with a common core and what appears to be two coils. And then this other mysterious gadget. So here's the thing that um, I saw on the internet. They talk about when they describe how these work, they only talk about an inductor and they knew that was most of this, but I felt like there should be something else involved. And here's at least one element. So I'm going to pull that out and we'll try to figure out what that is. OK, 
Okay, this mystery element, it turns out, it looks like is a reed switch. And these things usually uh, involve a starter relay. When I was a kid, we had a bathroom light that had two smaller bulbs and these little silver uh, insert things that uh, were called the starter. And they, uh, you know, would wear out after a while. You'd have to replace them. And they were designed for that. You really never replace the ballast. You replace the bulbs or the starter. But the ballast itself, you know, iron and copper, if it's not overheated or abused in some way or set on fire, it should be, uh, you know, something that lasts really for decades and the ones in our, in our house growing up did. But we had to replace the starter frequently. So you went through this little thing of, you know, is it the starter, is it the bulb, well, what is it? Um, so I think there's something that's important here, which is with this type of, you know, industrial type fluorescent lamp with the two bulbs, if the ballast goes bad, you get a whole new ballast. You get a whole new set of iron and copper and everything. But probably what went bad is this little uh, starter switch that isn't um, even replaceable. And that's why uh, modern day ballasts have use an electronic form that's cheaper to manufacture with modern technology and probably also, you know, potentially more reliable uh, because of being so a solid state. So I wouldn't doubt that, that these things wore out and that's why you had to replace the whole ballast. So I pulled out this little switch and we're going to test that in isolation with an ohm meter. And with nothing happening, it's, uh, you know, essentially short circuit. So it's a normally closed switch and it must open uh, at some point if the uh, my guess is that it's a kind of a heat activated switch that opens up when it's too hot. Now here I've got a known good tube. This is a 40 watt tube that I just pulled out from service a minute ago. And I thought that these had a uh, resistive element between them. So I measured the resistance on the end, and this one is showing about two mega ohms, so it's essentially an open circuit. Now, pulling our patient back over again. The, uh, the way this was set up is any like color was connected to one of these end pins of the tube. So I'm kind of guessing that, for example, two reds are shorted together. Let's pull that up so you can watch it with me. Okay, you'll take my word for it. Okay, not true. It's showing 700k and it's dropping. I'll show you that. Um, So we're going to have to do some more detective work to figure out what the wiring of all this is. Well, I've decided to stop at this point. I've got a lot of damage that I did in the process of getting the tar off. Um, I've got a second one to work with that I'm going to uh, possibly take apart with a little more care and, and especially with the knowledge that I gained from the first part of how it's constructed. There's a few things we can we can get out of this. One is there's kind of a brick of tar on each side. You can see how the wires work in this of this wire got cut off black but it goes out this way like the one here. And there's also a a sort of a might be hard to see but there's a sort of a terminal strip so this amounts to some sort of a 
of an inductor core that has terminal strips on each side that larger wires attach to and also this little switch thing that we saw. So the next time I think the the method would be to somehow try to heat or dissolve the tar. I don't know what the heat properties of this tar are, but uh, you know it might be that I can um, take a heat gun to it or some other method, uh, you know, probably in an outdoor setting to try to melt it up um, and you know get it to run away, and then I'll have a clean unit to work with to see how things are really wired here. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Mr. Switch, do you want them to give the video a thumbs up and subscribe? Yes, please give a thumbs up and subscribe. Thank you, Mr. Switch. Thanks, friends.